And guys, we're going to talk about when man was created, day six. Let me read the record and let's find out if the Bible and science square up here. God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, and down it says, and then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created them male and female he created them what's going on here Kenny this is really a critical section of scripture John God creates the land mammals he also creates man and some really important ideas here he creates human beings in his expressed image now he takes the the dust of the ground the same dust of the ground that he's created the animals uh, and so I think it's important for us to realize biblically we shouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of physiological affinity between animals and humans. Yet, when he breathes into the dust of the ground, he creates a living soul. I think we should anticipate from a biblical model that human beings will be like and unlike animals just as we will be like and unlike God. We're created in God's image. While scripture doesn't tell us explicitly what that means, it certainly implies our rationality, our ability to make moral choices and to deliberate, that we're relational creatures, we communicate, uh, that we are capable of powerful uh, actions in the world, taking dominion, and that we are soulish and spiritual creatures. And so, and in light of uh, what we know today, he creates uh, males and females, uh, and they then have marriage. And so some critical cultural, philosophical, and theological truths there in day six. Okay, the account says three specific kinds of land mammals are made here. Talk about what that is scientifically. Yeah, this is different from the fifth creation day where it addresses birds generically and sea mammals generically. The sixth creation day talks about three specialized kinds of land mammals land mammals that God creates to cohabit the planet with the future human beings. And two kinds are long-legged and one kind is short-legged. The short-legged ones, the ones that are built close to the ground, I think are referring to rodents and rabbits, maybe other creatures with short legs. And the long-legged ones we note are in two categories. There's the wild and then there's the, the behemoth, uh, which I think is reference to the herbivores, which are relatively easy for human beings to tame. And then the wild animals, I think, is a reference to the carnivores, although difficult to tame, make excellent household pets, whereas the herbivores do not make good household pets. All right, Fuzz, let me come to you. The fact is the Bible says God created man, okay? What's the parameters from the biblical genealogies? What's the longest space of time where we've got to say, that's it, we can't go any further than that. And then compare that with science. What are the parameters there for the, for the science area? Where does man show up? From the genealogies, you can infer roughly anywhere from 10,000 years ago to probably 100,000 years ago. That's the window. The most likely time frame would be in the 50, 40, 50, 60,000 year window. Uh, from genetic studies of modern human populations, we see a date for the origin of man in the neighborhood of 50,000 years ago. The archaeological record shows a sudden burst of human culture at that same time frame as well. So the scientific evidence is fully compatible with what the Bible teaches about the origin of man. 